start with Adam. Right. Adam Sparks, Knox News. I'm sure you guys have gone over the what you guys are going to do on game day. Will Coach Hopple be the primary play caller? Will y'all share that? How will that work? Yeah. You know what? Um, we're working through all that right now. Um, we've got we've genuinely done so much as a staff. There's so much different stuff coming in from from what we were able to do at UCF to what Cody's brought, what Jerry Mack has brought. Um, so we're working through it. Uh, at the end of the day, that's a good coach hypo question, and uh, and we'll kind of settle on that as we get closer to game day. Austin and then Patrick. When you're going to incorporate all those different ideas, is that allowed you at points in the season when you know you're you're getting a better feel for your team because you know I'm sure it'll get better as you play more and more games. <clears throat> that you know, Jerry's able to bring something and you're able to bring something to what you did at Iowa State or Illinois and other spots? Yeah, you know what, I think we've, we've tried so much and a lot of it has to do, Austin, with, with the tempo of play. We've tried to put in through spring and summer really all of those ideas. We spent a bunch of time pre-spring, spent a bunch of time in spring, spent a bunch of time in May. We didn't have the luxury to go out on the road. So spent a bunch of time of really tightening those ideas down um, and as we tightened them down, we had all summer, you know, you, the NCAA allows you now to be with your kids in the summer, allowed us to really, and primarily the specialized packages, the, the situational uh, football, third down, red zone, kind of bridge those ideas together, put the plan in place through the summer and fall camp. And so now we have a grab bag of things we can go to. Uh, the tempo play, you try not to do a whole lot new week to week obviously you gotta you, you end up scheming certain things to certain looks to certain things you're expecting but absolutely i mean jerry mac uh jerry mac brought some awesome ideas cody brought some awesome ideas cody is kind of like my go-to on man how, how does the sec do this how do how do defenses attack certain things um and then obviously hype has been in this league glenn has been in this league so it's been i don't want to say a grab bag but it's been a conglomerate of ideas uh, through the summer, put a bunch in, in in fall camp, and now we're kind of grab bagging as we're going, a, as we get pictures we're presented. This week, a unique challenge with a new defensive coordinator. Patrick? Alex, going to go with, with the quarterback question. Not that, don't need to make who's the starter or anything like that. Uh, but with uh, you talk going into the preseason about wanting to see Joe in this offense, what he looked like, how he, uh, I guess, adjusted to it. So what have you seen in three weeks of practice, and how has he kind of yeah, Patrick, he, he's really done a good job, really a great job of of fitting in, adjusting, learning, growing. Um, you know, he spent a bunch of time in May and June, July uh, learning the system. Um, he's a football smart young man. Um, he's played in games that matter. Uh, so for him, it's just been a terminology, a, a progression, a read. The way we coach quarterbacks is unique. Uh, I think Joey's done an incredible job with him, uh, doing the very best he can to, to prepare him. Um, really, all of those quarterbacks, all three of those guys, put them in tough situations, tried to create tough situations in practice and in scrimmages. Uh, but I think Joe has caught on really, really well. He's progressed. He's gotten better. He's had bad days. Um, we all have. But he's had bad days. I think my biggest point of emphasis offensively for us in general quarterback position specifically, how do you respond to the bad day? Um, and I, I think in general, that's been the message, the quarterback position, every position, right? A bunch of young guys, a bunch of guys that hadn't played a whole lot, trying to instill confidence while bringing adverse situations into play. Um, you, you can say adversity is going to come, adversity is going to come, adversity is going to come. You just hope it doesn't come for the first time September 2nd at Neyland. You're, so you're trying to create those situations. And to me, not coaching the quarterbacks, I want to see how they respond. Um, and, and I think Coach Heupel's in the same breath, and I think us as an offense in the same breath at that position. Adversity's coming, how do you respond, and continuing to instill confidence through those adverse situations has been the focus at that spot. Jimmy then Brent. Coach, uh, in terms of the offense, if you had a game this weekend, do you think the offense is efficient enough to where you think they would perform well if you played this weekend? Gosh, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, sir. We, we've taken this. Uh, we've taken this week uh, very much like a normal game week uh, for us. Today was a Wednesday practice. Yesterday was a Tuesday practice. 
Um, so this has worked out really, really well for us scheduling wise with the guys getting into school and, uh, and us really essentially having almost two weeks to prepare like, like it would be a game this Saturday. Um, and honestly, us as coaches needed that uh, to go through a normal game week before the normal game week. The players needed to see it. Again, the tempo of play, how we operate on offense. We don't, we don't have a vast menu of a million plays. Hence, we got to tighten it down, really prepare as if Saturday was game day. Um, and I think Coach Hype allowing us to, to do it this way has really helped. Again, yesterday was a Tuesday. Today is a Wednesday. We walk off the field in a normal game week. Tomorrow would be a walkthrough. We'd have a fast Friday on Friday. So absolutely, a as treating it like a game week, do I feel like we're ready? I'm glad we have an extra four days, but I, I, I think we're about as ready as we're going to get um, as, as we were playing on Saturday. Coach, back to the, to the quarterbacks. You said when we visited with you the first time, you kind of had some thoughts in mind when the separation might occur, like 10 days in. Without naming anything, has, has that competition kind of gone the way that you would thought in terms of guys separating themselves, or has it been more jumbled than you thought it would be through fall camp? Just kind of paint the picture sort of how that competition has, has gone thus far, if you can. Yeah. Setup question. I got you. I like it. Um, to be honest with you, tried to go in with a totally blank slate. All three of those guys have played a bunch of football, right? Hendon finished finished his career at West at uh, Virginia Tech. Started 23 games. You you kind of had a feeling for what he was going to be because of what you saw on film. There's a ton of film to see. Harrison finished the season here. You kind of had a feeling, but he was a young guy. He was a freshman you knew bullets were flying like any 18-year-old kid would. And then you had Joe who had some body of work, not a ton of body of work. Um, so went into a completely blank slate. Literally, those guys split ones, twos, and threes as we went through camp with a fourth. And we literally gave them all the equal opportunity with the best skill guys, with the best O-line. As we shuffled those skill guys and O-lines, uh, gave them the best opportunity to be successful. I don't know, I, I, at least personally, I tried to have a really clean slate. I didn't go into it with the hope that one guy was going to win it and another one wasn't. Obviously, you, you wanted to clear the situation up, but you genuinely obviously hope that there's three fully capable guys to go do it. And I truly believe that we have three fully capable guys to go do it. Who comes out first on game day? Obviously, leave it up to Coach Heupel. Um, and let him let him handle that situation. But I didn't go into it with a preconceived notion. I know probably maybe perceived that way by some, had zero thought of any of it. They're all three incredible human beings. They're all three students of the game. They're up in the office hanging out the entire day. Like literally, you walk into Coach Halsey's office, one of those guys is sitting in there. They are the model of what we want in a ball football player. Tough, blue collar, gritty, hard nosed, football players. Coach Heupel refers to it as poor, hungry, and desperate. Those three guys are. They resemble that. That's what you want in a quarterback. That's what you want in a leader. But in terms of what, what I thought was going to happen, we kind of like, let it happen and, and saw what happened. They all had an equal opportunity to go do it. Ben and Trey. Yeah, Coach, when you met with us at the beginning of the month, you spoke highly about Miles Campbell. Just how have you seen him progress? this month, and then what have you thought of uh, Julian Nixon, the tight end, obviously split out wide a bunch in, in high school more as a, a receiver, but what have you thought of him as a tight end this fall camp? Yeah, um, Julian has done a, a pretty good job of learning. Like when I say pretty good, he has never blocked a soul in his life. Um, he's never lined up. He's also never weighed 257 pounds. Um, so there's such a growth process. He's the ultimate needs a year to get his butt whooped in the weight room, to get to wake up early, go through the grind of what college football is and should be, um, play on the scout team, learn, grow. I've been really pleasantly surprised with Julian. I had no idea what to expect, right? There's a big body. I didn't meet him until he moved in um, into the dorms, um, really had, had film but didn't have any idea what the body was going to look like mentally, what he was capable of. He's done a good job adjusting. He's done a good job learning. I've been hard on him because um, I, I want to see if he'll push through the hard. Um, and he has pushed through the hard. He's had tough days. 
and we've kind of kept pushing and pushing and pushing. I do think there's a bright future for him. I think he does some really good things out flexed. I do think he's a willing blocker. He's got to become a tough blocker. Um, but I think he's learning and growing, and I, I've been pleasantly surprised with him. Miles, you know, Miles was sick early in camp um, and, uh, and lost some weight, has bounced back, has tried to recover from that. My hope is still that Miles helps us this year at some point. I would say right this second, he's fighting and battling to be in, that, in the rotation. Um, but my hope is by middle of the year, which I had said early on, right? Like I have never played a freshman tight end ever. And I, I don't know, I've been coaching for a while, have never done it. Guys that are capable, guys that have played in the league, guy that was a Mackey finalist last year, never played those guys as freshmen. My hope is we still get miles to that point. I think if, if he hadn't gotten sick, I think it would have been a little bit easier for him to bounce back. It just took him two weeks to get back in the swing of things and he's still learning and figuring it out. Um, I think mentally he's capable. I think physically he's willing and capable. I think just everything that's going on, I think we forget sometimes freshmen, like classes started, right? There's, there's obvious distractions now going on. It's figuring out what is a game week. We had talked about well, this is a normal game week for us. Well, he's got tutoring, he's got class, he's got class, tutoring, class, class, class football, got to watch film on his own, got to learn, got to grow, got to figure out the game plan. Like there's a lot going on for a young man, for an 18 year old. Uh, and that's not an excuse for him. It's just going to take him a second to put it all together to be able to line up on a Saturday at noon and play. And so my hope is still that he can play this fall force and help us. Um, I just, I don't know how early that'll be in the season. Alex, when you look at the, the running back room and, and how these guys have progressed over the course of fall camp and then coming out of the spring that you didn't have high on Evans, what does that look like to you, especially the guys behind Jabari and Tyon? And, and a few guys like Jalen, maybe T, D, Beckwith, Pierce, how do you think that they've handled figuring out the scheme this fall? Done a really good job figuring out the scheme. Um, I think Jerry Mack, Matt Merritt, those guys have done an incredible job teaching those guys. I, that's one position that I'm uber excited about going into, into game day. I think Jabari's had the camp. We all hoped he would. Tyon, honestly, in a lot of ways, has sur surpassed my expectations. He started to figure out what it is to be a Division One college football player. He was here in the spring. I think I've recruited junior college my whole career. You come in from a junior college, and it just hits you in the face. Um, and it took him a while to figure it out. Um, it really did. From how do I take care of my body? How do I sleep? When do I go to tutoring? Uh, all of that, just how do I figure that out? It took him a minute. It was resistant a little bit at times to figuring it out. There was some nudging there. Uh, but I think Tyon has put it all together. Having only football for three weeks for Tyon was really, really good. Um, and so I'm excited to see what he, what he can do. Uh, he's a different back than than those other guys in the room. He's a bigger back. Um, been really pleasantly surprised with him. Jalen Wright, man, oh man, really, really excited about Jalen. Um, he is he is everything we had hoped he would be. He's still a freshman, same sentiment as Miles Campbell. Now we just threw class on him. We threw, we, we threw the distractions around campus at him. Uh, he's got to learn and grow, uh, but I think he's got a really, really bright future. Um, the other guys in that room with Marcus and, and D and, and, and those guys, we're, we're still, honestly, it, this, is, this is a true answer, still figuring out how the rest of the back end of that rotation shapes out. Um, I think it'll truly be by committee on the back end of it. And I think it'll be on the, by committee on the front end of it. You know, we, we really need four guys ready to rock and roll September 2nd. Um, obviously, those guys get nicked up as the season goes. COVID's a real deal right now. Like, we got to have five to six of those guys ready. So I'm excited about, I'm excited about the three. I think Marcus has been steady Eddie for us. Um, and, and we'll continue to kind of figure it out. I think it'll be by committee on the back end of that rotation. But, but really excited about that group. I think it'll be fun. Um, I think those guys all bring a different element. It's fun. It's fun to, to be able to run different types of plays with those guys. Um, and they have the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, which is an element that, that has been really, really fun to keep messing with. Really quickly, Vince. 
two quick, uh, excuse me, two quick ones. One, what kind of clarity or separation have you had on the offensive line? And any words on Bowling Green's defense that uh, you might want to throw out there? Yeah, um, offensive line. I think we, we've started to kind of hone in. You know, Coach Ellerby really wants to have a true two deep. I feel like we're, we're close to that. Um, but you really want on game day six, seven, eight guys that can go. Again, the tempo will play. You'd like to be able to roll some guys in there. Um, we've done that. We did that at the previous spot where we were able to play six and seven guys in a game to keep guys fresh and keep them going. I think we're really close there. Um, I feel like we've got somewhere between seven and eight that we feel really, really good about rolling with. Um, but again, until bullets are flying and it's real, it's really hard to tell. There is some experience there. You feel really good. Um, I feel as good about the O line probably as the running back spot where we feel like we've got a little bit of depth and we can we can rock and roll, uh, knock on wood injury bug, but but we feel like we've got a little bit of depth to be able to get through and and plug. We got to stay healthy there. Uh, Bowling Green um, presents a challenge in the sense that new new defensive coordinator that hasn't been a coordinator in a while. Um, last time he was a coordinator was at Weber State. Um, prior to that, Eastern Michigan. So a lot of unknown, you're watching film. Uh, he was on the staff. He was not, um, he was not calling the plays. So um, fun challenge for week one. Um, I think it's, it's, you feel like you've got some feel for what's going on, but I think a little bit of it will be figured out kind of as you go. Um, we got to be consistent in what we do. And I think that'll be the sentiment all year offensively for us. What we do, consistency, playing harder than our opponent, and um, I feel like we'll be all right. But, but in terms of scheme, it, a little bit of a toss-up. Uh, they, could, they could come out and do whatever they, they please. And so uh, it'll be fun. Ask me after the game.